What's up everybody, welcome back. Hope you've been having a great week. If you guys have been following my Instagram, you probably have noticed that I've been on a bit of a vacation lately. So it's been a couple of weeks since I've been out in the Jeep on an adventure. So I thought what we do this week, because I get so many questions lately about all the upgrades and everything that we've done to the truck, and we've done so much lately that we do a walk around to the truck. I'm gonna go over absolutely everything that we have on the truck, all the upgrades, everything I carry in the truck, all the gear I'm using, all your questions, if there's something I don't cover, make sure you hit me in the comments, let me know, and I will try to answer it for you there. Brought to you by Epic Adventure Outfitters. Also by White Rock Dodge. And in part by So I think we'll start at the back today with one of our most recent additions, the dual swing out rear bumper from Expedition One. This thing is super beefy and there's a few reasons that I chose to go with this bumper. One, obviously the dual swing out. So I have a proper place to store my spare as well as some jerry cans for fuel. Also, it has this nice piece that wraps around the bottom here that protects the box. A box slider, kind of like the factory Rubicon box slider, except much beefier. Also on the back, our other recent addition, the RSI Smart Cap Evo Adventure. This is a completely stainless steel truck cap. And this version, the adventure version, does not have windows. It just has solid steel doors, which is something that I wanted. And if you pop it open, it has struts that uh, open it up. It's got molly panels on uh, the top here, which is nice. I've got one of my Claymore camp lights here so we can light up my camp area. And that works quite well for me. Let's take a look from the back. So another reason that we decided to put this on here is we previously had a half rack. So we had until about here for storing gear. Now we have this much room, which allows for a lot more gear to go in the back as well. The sides and the rear are all lockable. So when I'm traveling, I don't have to worry about my gear getting stolen. It also keeps it dry and dust free, which is nice. Inside the back here is not super interesting. I've got a bunch of camping gear just, uh, you know, from the last trip, my chairs. The front runner cutlery kit and front runner chairs that fold down real nice and small. I really like those. Sleeping bags, uh, tube, my Pro Eagle off road jack, which I never leave home without. On the bottom here, we're running a bed mat from Black Armor Mats. One of the first things we actually added to the truck. Keeps things from slipping around in the back. I like it a lot. Now, of course, on the top here, we have the iCamper Sky Camp Mini Rooftop Tent. I've been running this for actually about a year now. It folds back up in less than one minute. My favorite feature about it, it's a hard shell tent. So it's protected from branches and stuff like that. Love it. It's also one of the only hard shell tents that fits on the back of the Gladiator. Um, there's a number of knockoffs and whatnot, but as far as original designs, this is really the only option and it's very good quality. Okay, so we're up here on top of the truck over the cab. We're running the Rhino Rack Pioneer platform uh, on their backbone system. What I like about this rack is it mounts through the roof directly to the roll bar, which means that it's load bearing. You can stand on this, it is rock solid. Yes, you do have to drill holes in the hardtop to do this and you can't remove the hardtop once it's on, but I never remove the hardtop anyway. We live in a very wet, rainy climate. It's almost raining right now actually and uh, that doesn't really matter to me. What matters to me is having storage. Now up here we have our max tracks, which are an essential piece of recovery gear. We use these all the time. They're on a quick release mount. I just twist a couple of knobs, they come right off and are ready for quick and easy use. We also have two Milwaukee pack out toolboxes that are mounted on quick release plates. So what I like about these is basically you just pull a little thing and these come right off. 
and you want to put them back on, they just slide into the notches and these are rock solid, they're not coming off. Inside of these, on this side we're carrying extra chainsaw fuel, bar oil, chainsaw tools, all the chainsaw stuff is over here for quick access when we need to cut trees. On the other side, there's some tools, big wrenches, uh, all the stuff that we might need on the trail in case of something breaking. It's very easy to mount stuff on this rack because it has T-slots on all these pieces here. All right, moving along to the side here, we're running the Evo Rocker Bomber sliders with uh, body protection, uh, I don't know what you call these, skins, whatever they call them. So this is to protect uh, under and around the doors, and this is for if we come up on any rocks, uh, they will slide along these, which is why they're called sliders. Very beefy, one of the best sliders you can get for the Gladiator. Moving up to the front here, we are running the official Mopar Snorkel. This is basically a raised air intake. It uh, makes so your air for the engine comes in here instead of down here, which protects from water getting into the air intake when we're doing water crossings, as well as uh, just allowing for colder air from outside of the engine compartment to get into the engine. Up here on the hood, a lot of people ask me about this solar panel that we've got mounted on the hood. This is from Cascadia 4x4, a local company. It is a 30 watt solar panel. It's basically just a trickle charger for the battery. Doesn't provide a whole lot of juice, but just enough that while it's sitting there, it's providing us with some charge uh, to keep the battery from going dead. Right up at the front, we're running the ARB stubby front bumper. We've got our worn 12,000 pound VR Evo winch with synthetic line. We're gonna be swapping this out for a line from our friends at Freedom Recovery Gear probably today. This is a new winch, I just haven't had time to swap out the line yet. Over here we've got our radio antenna. This is a VHF radio antenna. A lot of people ask what this is. That's what it is. So this is the Kenwood NX5000 series uh, radio. Custom. It's got a Story Till Now logo on it. Dirty and dangerous crew. Custom channels. Everything's programmed in. This can, can store a ton of different channels. It records all of our communications. So when you hear us talking on the radio, it's because we're recording it in this radio. Up here, I've got the hand receiver on a magnet mount. This is a remote faceplate. The main radio itself is mounted down here under the steering wheel out of the way. We just started working with Kenwood this year and they set us up with all sorts of communications gear for the Gladiator. We're still getting it all installed. I'm gonna have more on that in the future, in uh, future videos. We've also got the 67 Designs uh, phone mount, GoPro mount, uh, rail system back here that's mounting all the gear. There's a link for that in the description if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff. Also on the inside here, we have the JCR overhead molly rack, which is great for uh, storing some gear up here in this, this space that is normally somewhat useless. All right, moving on to the back of the inside of the truck. I'm just kind of going all over the place here, not in any kind of order. We'll talk about suspension and all that under this, so don't turn off the video yet. I've got lots more to talk about. In the back, we've got, of course, our Jackery Explorer 1500, which is powering everything. It is running the fridge, it is charging my batteries, it is charging any other devices that we need. This fits perfectly uh, in front of the seat here. So that just lives in the truck. It charges while we're driving, plugged into the power outlet right here under the center console. You can see here we've got some drone batteries set up to charge at all times. We got camera batteries charging off this at all times. This is just probably my favorite thing in the entire truck. You guys know Jackery has been an awesome supporter of the channel and our adventures. So if you're interested in picking up a Jackery, there's a link in the description. Uh, it does help support the channel if you click on those links. I don't have them in the back of the truck right now, but generally we do also carry two of the Jackery Solar Saga 100 solar panels. And I just kind of throw those back here behind my fridge. And then if we're camped somewhere for a few days, like I was recently, just pull those out and keep a, a full charge going into the Jackery so that we've got power all the time. The Jackery is also running our fridge. This is a Dometic CFX3. I forget what size it is, but it's pretty big. Uh, this thing just stays in the truck all the time. I have food and drinks in there all the time. Even when I'm not out on the road, I just keep my drinks in there to keep them cold. 
having a fridge is essential with what we do. Now I've also got this on the Goose Gear 60% seat delete platform, which uh, Epic Adventure Outfitters set us up with. This removes the larger 60% seat so that we have more storage space. Great piece of gear, very high quality, good company Goose Gear. Okay, so with the inside out of the way, let's talk about tires, wheels, suspension, other recent additions here. We just recently added the TerraFlex Nomad wheels. Now these wheels have, these are not bead locks. These are a plastic rash ring that, that bolts on around the wheel to protect the wheel, which is aluminum from getting scraped up when we hit rocks and stuff like that. So if these break, you basically just take them off, put new ones on, they cost about six bucks each to replace. So um, it, it, I mean, I break them all the time, so it's, it's a little bit of a hassle, but uh, it's not that much hassle when you consider that's protecting your very expensive wheels and keeping them looking good, which I like. We're also running Toyo Open Country MTs. These are the new tires we put on. Um, so far, I really like these tires. They perform quite well in snow. That is a bear. That is a baby bear. Where's mom? Pretty common situation around here in my neighborhood. Bears just strolling through. Not exactly what you want to see uh, a baby cub just kind of wander by when you're filming a video because that means mom was around somewhere. But uh, we're pretty used to them around here. He's just strolling down the street now, check us out. All right, anyway, what was I talking about? The Toyos. Toyos have been good in the snow. They're quieter on the road than the Nittos were so far. Really like these tires, great traction and slippery conditions. Uh, I'll, I'll update you guys as they go on in their life, but so far these tires have been, been pretty good for me. Starting to rain. Bears, rain. Can't make a video out here, man. All right, let's talk about suspension. We are running all TerraFlex parts uh, other than the springs for the suspension. We've got the Falcon 3.5 adjustable E-Adapt shocks. So there's a switch in the cab that I can switch to control soft, or firm, soft, or auto for the suspension. Basically what that does is there's like an accelerometer uh, under the driver's seat and like a gyro. So it can tell if you set it to auto based on the G-forces, it'll adjust the firmness of the shocks to prevent like nose dive and stuff like that. Really cool setup. So far, suspension's working out great. I have a whole video on that install, so I won't go too much into it here, but uh, working out great. We're running Evo four and a half inch springs because uh, at the time we did the suspension refresh, TerraFlex did not have a four and a half inch spring. I think they do now. We may upgrade to those springs at some point. Uh, right now, the rear end is sagging because the springs are too soft. So we're gonna be putting in some heavier duty springs to combat that. I think that pretty much covers everything on the truck. Starting to rain, bears are jumping out of the bushes. I think that's gonna be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this kind of walk around and overview of the truck. Again, if I missed anything, or you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Uh, I'd love to know what you guys wanna know about the truck that I haven't covered here. Um, we've done a lot of stuff to it this spring. I'm pretty happy with how it's coming together. And I think, you know, I'd like to say we're, we're in like the final stages, but you know how it is, it never ends. All right guys, I'll catch you next week, hopefully with a full adventure. Thanks for watching, I appreciate you. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do me a favor, hit subscribe, hit the like button. I'll talk to you later.